I'm Tolu Oni. I am a public health physician scientist. I work as a clinical senior research associate at the uh, Medical Research Council Epidemiology Unit at the University of Cambridge. I'm also an honorary associate professor at the School of Public Health and Family Medicine at the University of Cape Town. My research focuses on urban health very broadly, more specifically looking at ways to harness different aspects of the urban environment to create health equitably at a population level. I'm currently working on research projects both from the Cambridge side of things and through the research initiative for cities health and equity research that I lead in Cape Town on research projects that look at specifically um, diet and physical activity, not from the perspective of the individual, for trying to understand the lived experience of the individuals, trying to understand the ways in which they interact with the urban environment, and to really try and generate knowledge to develop interventions at the level of the environment, at the level of policies that can improve uh, the, the diet and physical activity behaviors towards ultimately improving health outcomes related to the prevention of non-communicable diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and risk factors like obesity. So I also work looking at, in terms of the built environment, looking at things like housing and the human settlements, looking at food systems and food environments, and really trying to understand the different components of those environments and the opportunities uh, for harnessing those for health. I'm driven by two things, by a realization that a lot of the, a lot of the African continent is increasingly urban, we're rapidly urbanizing, by a recognition of the fact that these urban environments are growing and developing in a way that are at the moment largely negatively impacting health, but identifying the opportunity to harness those instead for, for, for health. So what I hope my, the impact of my research would be is to inform strategies in the in urban development uh, to and, uh, and urban policies towards thinking about uh, strategies towards, towards aligning their goals actually for health creation and not just for building of the, of the, of the environment. The first thing in identifying the innovation that is needed is a critical part of what I do and that is looking at whether it's innovate, innovatively thinking about urban development, how do we think about in a way that is inclusive, that actually builds healthy communities instead of ex excluding the majority of people, innovating thinking about the policies and governance mechanisms that support and guide these uh, regulations and, and standards that, that inform these. So can we, can we innovate, can we, can we harness and utilize evidence to innovate from our policies to our urban governance mechanisms, to our urban planning and development um, uh, processes and standards, uh, and innovating those in a way, in ways that put at the fore uh, the health and well-being of the people who will be living, working, and hopefully thriving in those spaces. So that is the critical uh, route towards the impact I hope to achieve. The disconnect between um, the, 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 the disconnect between what we see on the ground in terms of the health of people and what needs to happen in terms of prevention and the strategies that are in place to, to, um, to support that health. So from my perspective I see a lot of, um, I think, insufficient a lot of focus on disease and insufficient obsession with health creation. So how can we bridge that gap between trying to prevent disease and actually create health because we would not be able to afford to treat ourselves out of the epidemics that are growing uh, and being pushed uh, by, the, by the environments that we live and, 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 and work in. 
So how do we bridge those together? I see it in terms of, in a previous existence, I was um, leading the undergraduate uh, curriculum for, for public health for undergraduate, for undergraduate uh, students, and really trying to work to bridge what we teach students with the relevance of what they what the, the, the degree is in society. And I think that would be the first the first uh, gap that needs to be filled so that we are actually training um, scientists in, to be able to be responsive to the, to the societal challenges. The other gap I see is then the gap between what we, what we know um, or what some of the evidence that we, that we already have and the implementation. And I think that's partly because uh, the way that the evidence is generated from the perspective of scientists has not necessarily been sufficiently contextualized to the realities of, uh, that, that they would be implemented in. And so whilst in theory you could have a research that is, has really good, um, uh, con contributes knowledge in theory, the ability to put it into practice requires understanding the broader context. And one of the things I found expanding it now beyond my research is the importance of scientists understanding the context within they work, within which they work. So we train people and one aspect is training their research to be relevant, but the other aspect is not just, um, not just assuming the, a deficit, not just assuming that nothing is happening. So if we're trying to have impactful research to impact policy, what do, we, what do we know as scientists about the policy context that we're trying to impact on? Because my experience is that there's a lot of good and interesting and innovative uh, policy and strategy type mechanisms going on and being tried across the continent, but very little understanding or awareness of those that are ongoing from the perspective of scientists. And so I think that's one of the things that I would be important for a scientist to, to bridge. Um, I think from the perspective of, of, of governments, um, it's really closing the gap between their access to an engagement with policy, with, with policy, between policymakers and scientists. So can we explore mechanisms to better bridge, to better bring together scientists and policymakers? And this is something that the NEF uh, uh, community is, is, is starting to work, to work on. So how, in what ways from the government's perspective, can mechanisms could be created within the policy environment to Pull in um, to pull in scientists to work with in close in tandem with uh, with policymakers to explore some of the challenges to explore potential options for to addressing those. From the perspective of industry, I think it'd be important to um, think about industry not as a separate uh, entity in society, but as a, an important part of society. So whether that is a society users of of uh, products and initiatives that are developed through industry partnership or whether that is contributing towards the development of those. So if we think about the former, understanding the realities of what people, what drive people and really tagging that onto the core principles of what it means to be uh, a thriving African society. And so can we can the industry really tap into that context? And from the perspective of the skills of the users, how do we bridge the gap between the skills that are required to, um, to contribute to the development of these new innovations and what has been taught? So really a connection of, between the education system and the, and the users and developers of, of, these, of these innovations to understand better how to tailor some of the, um, the skills being developed within our higher education systems for the contextual innovative um, interventions that we, that we would like to see to advance our society in an equitable fashion. So the work of Rish um, that I've been working on in setting up for the last couple of years has just really started, uh, started, started going forward. So in the next five years, I hope the work that comes out of that would really serve to bridge that gap between, um, between the 
science, between policy, and between the industry, particularly because I work in the context of cities and trying to essentially um, answer the questions, in what ways can we uh, develop uh, healthy, inclusive cities in Africa? So I hope that, or I aim, that in five years, um, the research that would come through from the, from the ongoing work and, and new work would really be speaking directly to that and will be uh, implemented within, within the broader um, African policy and, and, and private environment. 10 years is always a little bit more difficult to forecast, um, but just so I don't know exactly where, but I know that the ethos of where I would want to be would really still be bridging that divide. So looking at, at, that, at that scale, so at the continental scale, particularly looking to the ways in which the knowledge and the le lessons learned within the African context as our cities develop can contribute to the global um, scientific environment, can cont contribute to the global society to, and, and really provide uh, best practice on the ways in which a knowledge base um, and, and, and evidence can contribute to, 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 to the development of societies. So I see that not just within the continent, but and, and developing development of the continent, but really pushing forwards the role of Africa in really being an exemplar to the rest of the world um, in, in, in really sh showing how it's done. So if you're thinking of becoming a fellow or thinking about applying to be a fellow, I'd say take a breath, pause for a minute, and just reflect on where you on your journey so far. Reflect honestly on where you see your contribution. Reflect on the potential impact, the impact you've had so far, and the kind of impact you wish to have, <clears throat> whether that's within your city, within your country, or in the broader continent. And I think that reflection helps think about help helps you process the ways in which the NEF, um, applying to become a NEF fellow could, could contribute to that. And importantly, it helps focus the mind on the benefits of being a NEF fellow and understanding the importance of acting and, and being active not just within the academic environment, which we all, we all are in the context of academic conferences, but really understanding the benefit of bridging science policy and broader society. So the, the most important thing I would say is to understand your role, understand where you want to be, and then put forward an application that reflects your heart and where you see yourself um, contributing to broader um, continental uh, development.